Hey everybody, welcome back to the SOLIDWORKS Electrical Implementation video series. If you've been watching up to this point, we've covered some of the basics when dealing with the software and what you see when you first open up the software, particularly the library tab, the tools tab, more in particular, the projects manager and project templates. So now that we've gotten some of that basic information out of the way, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a project. So in order to create a brand new project, we can go ahead and simply select new, which is going to allow me to select one of those previously created templates. So in this case here, I'm going to choose my ANSI template. I can give it a new name. I can add contract information, customer, design office, any of the other peripheral information that I want to associate to this particular project. I'm going to let the software run through and it's what it's doing right now is creating and updating the database and creating new tables specific for this project. So we'll just give this a minute to go through the process. So now you can see on the left hand side, the project manager has closed from the center of the screen, but on the left hand side, we now have our project open and we can see that inside that project, I have the top level and we have a book and we have folders and we have another book and we have even more folders. Now this is just how I created this particular template. Nothing says you have to have it this way. The default has one book with a couple sheets in it and that's it. But every customer is different. Every user is different. They want to create their projects in their own way and organize their information how they are comfortable. So you can set this up in any manner that you desire. You can have folders within folders. The only thing you can't have is a book within a book. So now that we have our project open, we also see that we have a few new tabs available to us. We have a project tab, we have the process tab, and the import export tab at the top. So first we'll jump into the project tab and what's available under that project tab. And within this, we have the ability to create new books, new folders, new schematics, mix schemes, so on and so forth. The properties of the project or the specific properties of whatever I have selected. And then we also have our configurations. And this is probably one of the more important tabs to pay attention to when we're working with the software it's going to control a lot of the back end information and how things are being generated within this particular project. And taking a look at the project configurations, you can see there's a, first there's a lot of information even on the first tab, but there's several tabs that you can go through. If you've been following along, uh, I mentioned languages, well you can also select different languages here to to set either English, French, Spanish, whatever it may be as your primary and secondary language or even tertiary language inside the, the uh, software. You can also go in and change the drawing unit system and the dimension units within just this project. Maybe you have something set at a higher level um, for everything, but just this project, I have it set to Imperial. But again, this is based off of my template and what I copy that essentially from my previous project when I created that template. There's a lot of other information in here that you can turn on or turn off or manipulate. Anytime you see the little F the formula button there, it is to edit and control a formula for a specific piece of information. So as you can see down here on the bottom of the screen, whenever I'm trying to create information about a PLC, it's going to bring up a window like this and allow me to pick certain attributes and pull them together to make the naming convention I desire. And this is where it gets down to setting this stuff up the first time, saving it as a template, and now I don't have to worry about going back into this and changing it later. Graphically, what do I want my symbol connection points to look like or my wire connection points? I can go in and change those here. What do I want my cable cores to, to look like? Do I want them to be brown? There's a lot of information here as well as far as, again, manipulating the software and giving it the detail that I want, not what, you know, is just what everybody else has. Symbols, these are specific to um, certain things such as your wire label or your cable label. Attributes, I can define a global attribute that maybe I want 
the tag of every single symbol in my entire project to be red, well, then I can go ahead and edit that and add that information here. And it will look to this and overwrite what you might have inside the actual DWG for that particular symbol. The text, you can set the font for certain pieces of text within the project, your echo potential, your line diagram, schematic core, what font type, the height, bold, italic, so on and so forth. Again, there is information here about changing the formula for that piece of specific information as well. A lot of folks, a lot of users will manipulate this on how they organize and set up their row numbers, for example. So if you saw the title block video where I talked about our row and column numbers, this is where you would come in and manipulate that row number. Some users would like to have not just row number where it's going to say one, two, three, four, but also show the sheet plus the row on there. So maybe it's in, for this case, it's going to be zero, two for the, sh the sheet or folder in this case, and then plus the row as well. So you would manipulate that again through the formula manager. And you can see here, there's a lot of different formulas that I can manipulate and really put some detail into. Our title block. So if I'm working with a cover sheet, what kind of title block do I want? In this case here for schematics, maybe I want to change my title block for this particular item and I will choose a default for this and it will change that. So every time I create a new schematic within this project, it's going to use this particular sheet. I can also change that within the individual title block. It'll just say replace under the sheet that I have available. And then libraries. This is where I we talked about the different types of libraries. I can turn on or turn off specific libraries for this particular project. In this case here, maybe I don't want any of the users who are using this project or working on this project to have access to these three particular libraries and they have to use only just the AFP heads, whichever library that one is. I think I created that as a test, but you can go ahead and set that up as necessary. Also under projects, which we'll get into a little bit more, is our wire styles and our line diagram styles or all the different configurations as well. These are all important. Nothing says you have to manipulate them all the first time, the first go around. You can build out a project, save it as a template, continue working, and then you find something, oh, I'm going to add a PLC on this project. Let me go in and edit my configurations for PLCs. And then when you're done with that project, save it as a template and overwrite the other template that you had. So you can do that and just nothing, again, nothing says you have to have everything set up right at the very beginning before you start. But there's certain things such as things in the project tab that make sense to start off the, on the right foot. That way you're not constantly going back and, and go, oh, I wish I changed that. Oh, I wish I changed that. Oh, I wish I changed this. So again, it just makes sense. So with that said, that was just a general overview of creating a project from scratch. We can see our project structure in this case here. Again, nothing says I have to have this in this case here. Well, maybe I don't want that book at all in this project. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. And now I'm back to this. And that was the basic project configuration tab, which I definitely recommend going through and just maybe at least taking a look and tweaking some of the minor things to really give it the look you want for that project. So again, I hope this helped. There's a lot more to cover. We're going to make a whole bunch more videos on this stuff. So thanks for watching and see you next time.